Welcome to the UAS weekly news update. And this week I've got six different topics I wanna to talk about. And the first one is an update on Lens for hobbyists. Second one is more delays for the remote ID implementation, which is not really good news. Another one, I'm gonna talk about DroneBase and their acquisition of a software company. Then I wanna talk about the pilot statistics for 2018 that were released by the FAA. And then I'm gonna talk about Pair Zero, the company that makes the parachute for drones that is now available for Canadian pilots. And then lastly, I'll talk about the anamorphic lens that I mentioned last week that is now available for two different models. On Thursday this week, the FAA had a webinar to talk about Lens for Hobbyists. I've mentioned these webinars before. I think they're a great way to get information straight from the FAA. And this week, they've clarified quite a few pieces of information on Lens. Uh, now, they talked about Lens for remote pilots and Lens for hobbyists. I have a full video that explains how to use Lens and how to get airspace approval for remote pilots. I invite you to take a look at it. Once all the information is out for submitting lens request for hobbyists, I will have an updated one for hobbyists. But in the meantime, if you're a hobbyist and you wanna see how it works, more than likely it's gonna be very close to how it works for remote pilots. So go ahead and watch that video. You'll get a lot of good information. Now, some information that the FAA mentioned today is uh, the fact that, uh, and they confirmed that, the fact that hobbyists will only be able to fly up to the grid numbers on the uh, UAS facility map and uh, or below. They will not be able to fly above like remote pilots are. And uh, at this stage, there will be no approval for hobbyists above those numbers. Now, the way that this is gonna work is pretty straightforward. And I'll resume it in, in very few words, as few words as I can, is you're gonna have to go to this page called the um, the UAS facility map. Whether you're hobbyist or remote pilot, it doesn't matter, you have to be familiar with that page. This is where you will find out if airspace is considered controlled, okay? From there, you have two options. If the area that you're gonna fly in is near an airport and that airport is controlled, then you're going, or in controlled airspace, I should say, then you will look at the color. If the color is green, then it means that that airport belongs to the lands program. If it belongs to the lens program, then you can submit your request through a lens provider, just like Kitty Hawk, for example, or through um, uh, UA Sidekick, for example. And then you will get almost instantaneous approval as long as you're flying at or below the grid number that's in there. If the airport that you're flying in or the area that you're flying in is in controlled airspace, but it's red, then it means that that airport does not belong to lens. At this point, you have to go on the FAA Drone Zone website and you have to submit a request through that website and then get approval. Now, this is not instantaneous. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get that approval. Now, in the past, it's taken a long time for the FAA to approve those. They're getting a lot better now, but I would uh, warn you, if that's where you're gonna fly, make sure you submit this a couple days in advance. Now, one thing that I haven't gotten an answer from the FAA, and I've asked a question on the page, but they were so submerged with uh, answers, with questions, is uh, if you submit an approval there on the Drone Zone website, is it gonna be just a one day approval or for that specific time that you requested, or is it gonna be an extended approval like they do for remote pilots? So I don't have the answer to that. And maybe somebody from the FA can chime in in the comments and let me know what they think, um, or, or if they know the answer, uh, that would be great, I think, for all the subscribers. Now, another piece of information that's in there that they gave us is that uh, Lens is only gonna be available during the day, okay? If you wanna fly at night, you have to be at this stage a remote pilot. Now there's still some clarification that needs to come up in terms of uh, night flying for hobbyists. It is a lot at the moment, but I have a feeling it's gonna change in the future. But if you wanna fly in controlled airspace at night, then you need to submit a request through the FA drone zone, not through Lens. It is not gonna be available through Lens, okay? Now at that point, you're gonna need a waiver if you're flying as a remote pilot, so that's kind of a different story. Also, another thing that, um, that has been mentioned in the comment section during that, that webinar is the fact that Lens is gonna be approved 
on the 23rd, uh, available on the 23rd for hobbyists. And that's not news, I've talked about this before, but a new piece of information that I did not know about is that Drone Zone for hobbyists is gonna be a little bit more delayed. And so if you fly in an area that is red on the facility map, which means that it is not available under Lance, then you will need to wait a little bit longer past July 23rd. They have not mentioned a deadline for this, so I don't know how long it's gonna take, but that's gonna be delayed a little bit longer. Now, the good news is, Lance is available for over 600 airports. So uh, there should be a lot of airports out there that you can fly into as a hobbyist as of July 23rd, which is right around the corner, okay? Now, if you want more information on these webinars, I highly recommend you go on the YouTube page for the FA. I'm gonna put a link down in the description and I want you to go and watch these. They're really good, they're free. And again, uh, Kevin Morris and his team, I think they're doing a great job at trying to uh, educate people out there. And uh, I know it's not an easy task because things are changing all the time, but uh, hopefully we can get people to understand what they have to do to fly in controlled airspace, which is kind of a big deal, okay? This is not something that should be taken lightly. If you're flying in controlled airspace, it means that you're flying close to manned aircraft and we gotta pay attention to that. So if you're a hobbyist, I wanna hear about you. I wanna know if you understand Lance, if you understand what's gonna happen on July 23rd, if you understand how you're gonna submit those requests, how to read the US facility map, and if you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments. I know the FA has been swamped during those, uh, those webinars, but I'll do my best to answer some of these questions. Uh, I'm pretty up to date on all this stuff, so I understand it very well. So let me know in the, in the comments if you have questions and I'll try to clarify it for you. Another piece of information is regarding remote ID. Now, I've talked about remote ID in the past. I actually have a full video that explains how remote ID works and compared to actually ADSB. So I invite you to watch this video. I'm gonna put a link up here for you to take a, to take a look. And um, the, the news is that the, the proposed rulemaking for remote ID was supposed to come out uh, on uh, July 23rd, 21st and it actually has been pushed again to September 20th, so another month down the road. Now, this is not the first time that this is being kicked down the road. Uh, I'm not sure what the delay is, but um, I know a lot of people are expressing concerns. Without remote ID, we can't go and do uh, advanced operation on a widespread basis, okay? So this is the key for uh, beyond line of sight, and this is the key for uh, flying over people on a larger scale, and, uh, and we need that regulation to be in place. So I know a lot of US representatives have expressed concern uh, that this keeps getting delayed. Um, Please watch the video if you don't understand what remote ID is. I think it's a cool technology. One of the thing that remote ID is supposed to do is help the general public uh, get more trust in our industry. And uh, so my question to you is, do you think that remote ID is actually going to help with that trust issue? And uh, what do you think of these delays? Let me know in the comments and uh, we can have a discussion. Next, let's talk about DroneBase. Now, DroneBase, if you don't know who they are, they're this company that hires third-party pilots and they provide uh, services to businesses, uh, aerial images, uh, inspection, roof inspection, mapping, and all these things. There are several companies out there. DroneUp is another one, but DroneBase just acquired a software company. Now, the software company was called BetterView. Now, they've relabeled this uh, software to DroneBase Insights. The software is using AI in order to help insurers and property owners and property managers in order to assess damage and mitigate the risk on their properties. So uh, this is not really something for you and I if you're just a drone pilot and if you fly for drone base, but I think what it does is it's a, it's the, a great move for a, a great next move, I should say, for drone base as a, uh, as a pilot company uh, to have their own software. I think it's gonna bring them probably more customers. So let me know, are you a customer? Is that something that you wanna purchase? Maybe you are a roof inspector and this is something that you're gonna be using, or maybe you fly for drone base. Do you think this is gonna bring you more clients? Let me know in the comments. This week, the FAA released the 2018 pilot statistics, and I wanna go over some numbers. And the first one is a 53% increase in remote pilots between 2017 and 2018. We went from 69,000 pilots in 2017 to 106,000 pilots uh, that got their licenses in 2018. Now that's a major uh, uh, increase, that's a major jump. And if you actually look at the manned aircraft side of the statistics, it's not as rosy. It's about a 1% increase 
in manned aircraft uh, between the two years, which is, which is not great because if you follow the news and if you know anything about the aviation industry, uh, there is a shortage of pilots. Uh, it's not only in the US, it's, it's global. And, uh, and this 1% increase is not gonna help us. Uh, there's a lot of things that come into play. Uh, a lot of people are retiring, the baby boomers are retiring. There's a huge demand, uh, increase in demand all over the world in, 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 uh, in countries like uh, China and in, 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 in the Middle East. And so this is taking pilots away and uh, we just don't have the throughput right now to uh, fill in all these seats. So uh, US airlines are hurting pretty bad for pilots and, uh, and so is everybody else in the world. And this 1% is not great. Now, the somewhat good news is there was a 12% increase of student pilots between 2017 and 2018. Now, this is not as good as it was before. Between 2016 and 2017, there was a 16% increase. Now we're done with a 12% increase. So let me know what you think. Do you think that um, the, the remote pilot uh, numbers are gonna keep increasing at a rate of 50 plus percent? And um, also, I think that maybe some of these remote pilots will eventually turn into uh, pilots, manned aircraft pilots, uh, student pilots, private pilots, and maybe commercial pilots in the future. Um, do you think that's, uh, that's gonna happen? Are you one of those person that started with drones and then decided to go into the manned aircraft side and fly airplanes? So let me know in the comments. Again, I wanna have this discussion. Flight training is what I've done for my whole life in the manned aircraft side. And so I'm interested in hearing what you guys think. Let's talk about this Kickstarter anamorphic lens. I mentioned it last week. I actually purchased one of them. Um, they were only available at the time for the Mavic 2 series, the Pro and the Zoom. And then now they just released information that it is now available for the Air and for the, uh, the original Mavic Pro. Now they've raised $440,000 so far as of Thursday and uh, their original goal was $100,000. So four times or more than four times what they had requested initially. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, if you wanna see more information, go back to, uh, to last week's episode and see what I talked about there. Um, is this something that you're gonna get? Do you, did you buy one already? Or are you interested in buying one? Uh, if so, let me know in the comments how you're gonna use it. I, again, I bought one and I'm pretty excited. I think this is gonna be pretty cool. The last piece of information I want to talk about is the Pair Zero company that is now unlocking flights over people in Canada. Now, I've mentioned this in the past in some of the news update, I think it was week two, where uh, Pair Zero allowed several companies in the US to get approval to fly over people to get that waiver. That's one of the most sought after waiver uh, in the US right now for drone pilots. And um, they've now moved to Canada and then now they're allowing people in Canada to get the same kind of waiver. Now, Canada went through a set of changes recently in June. Uh, I have a video actually I'm working on right now to uh, kind of help you understand what's happened in Canada. They've decided to go a slightly different approach than the FAA and I just wanna talk about what, uh, what that means. And um, the price tag is about $1,700, $1,800 for this parachute with the compliance package. Uh, if you wanna buy this for just uh, a parachute for your drone without getting the, the waiver, it's a lot cheaper, but this is the price you have to pay to get all this uh, compliance package in order to get the approval. So I'll put a link down there if you wanna see more information. Let me know, have you used one? I've actually uh, seen, witness a, a testing of one of them. I think it's pretty cool. And um, are you planning on using one? Have you used one before? And what does this mean to you? So again, let me know in the comments. And as always, if you like this video, please like it, please leave a comment, please interact and, uh, and subscribe. Uh, we just passed 500, so thank you for that. That went pretty quickly, actually. I know it's not a big number for most people, but it's a pretty big deal for me. Um, I love sharing this information with you guys every week and more information to come. So like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Thank you.